Hello, everyone, and welcome to my Comenius presentation. For my Comenius project, I chose to do something a little bit different from the standard Comenius project, which would be more STEM-based. So I chose to do something in the realm of literature and in fiction. Uh, so my project is actually an original short story numbering a little bit over 10,000 words. And so I was motivated to do a project like this because I'd always loved reading fiction, but before now I'd never really tried to write anything in the genre before. I'd only, all my writing had been confined to doing academic writing, um, scholarly essays and things like that. So very different from um, fiction writing. And so I thought that I'd have a lot of fun writing it and I'd also be able to um, advance and improve my, my writing skills in a really different aspect and different field from academic writing. Um, and so starting off, I, since I'd never really done any fiction writing before, only very limited projects in school, um, I knew that I'd need some inspiration. And so to this end, I read lots of short stories um, since I knew that novels would be a little bit more unfeasible um, and unrealistic given the time constraints of the project being only um, one year. And so um, I picked a lot of these short stories and one of, the, my, one of my favorite authors that I identified in the search was um, Ted Chiang. And so he is an award-winning author who is um, most known for his thought-provoking stories that leave readers with um, a question or with um, an unresolved um, uh, thought that really sticks with them after reading, or at least that was my impression when I read his stories. Um, so he has a few um, anthologies that he's published. And so I read, um, I read almost all of these. And one consistent thing that I noticed with all the stories is that they really leave readers wondering um, um, about their own reality. And so that's what I was going for with my story. So after I'd read um, a lot of these short stories from him and from other authors, um, I decided that I was ready to start the writing process. And so this writing process is where the brunt of the time during my Comenius project was spent. Um, so I'd, I'd probably break it up as around um, maybe um, a fifth of the time spent reading and researching um, how to do fiction writing in the first place. And then the rest of the, the four fifths of the time of the project was spent writing. And so at the beginning of the writing process, I wasn't quite sure where to start. I just knew that I had to start by writing something, anything, even if it wasn't going to be perfect. Um, and so that was probably the hardest part, just putting something down onto the page, even though it wasn't perfect. And then as um, I kept doing this and writing these drafts, um, I realized that as I got into the, this third or the fourth page of the whatever draft that was on, I would either have a sense that, oh, this is this is going well, or that this isn't quite what I'm going for with the story. And so um, as I was getting to the, the fourth or fifth page of one of these drafts, I just had a sense that this isn't quite what I wanted to do. And then luckily enough, um, one day um, I was in the shower and this, an, an idea for the story just came fully formed into my head as uh, all the best thoughts are in the shower. Um, but so it just popped into my head fully formed. And that story is actually the one that I stuck with um, and carried through to the end. So with very little alteration from its original conception. Uh, so that's a little bit of a funny, um, funny tidbit about the story. So um, yeah, so it came to me fully formed from start to finish and I really didn't change too much um, in terms of the narration plot. But uh, in terms of the technical aspects of the story, those ones were a little bit more difficult than just the, the narrative. Um, so my Comenius um, advisor, Dr. Crow, he really helped me with the more technical aspects of fiction writing that I hadn't been exposed to before. So having like a consistent point of view um, and um, having diction that really crafts the tone that I'm going for. Those were two of the most difficult things, I think, where I was, I was going for, or I thought I was using words that would convey one type of tone, but it was really getting... Um, it was really coming across in a different light. And so reading through the drafts I was writing and checking for consistency in these two regards was probably the most challenging part of the, of the project, but also the most rewarding since I think I've, I've really grown as a writer in those aspects. Um, so for the point of view of the story, um, I experimented with many different forms from first person to third person to even a little bit of a stream of consciousness narrative. But eventually I settled on a third person limited narrative uh, point of view where um, readers are aware and um, immersed into the thoughts of one character and don't have access to the thoughts and feelings of other characters. But there's a, a slight separation between um, the the narration and the character. Um, I also wanted to help bridge this distance um, 
with a little bit of a um, free and indirect discourse narration where um, readers will be able to uh, in the narration embedded in the narration are the thoughts and the interpretations of the character and I thought this was a central part of the story since one of the, the central themes I was I wanted to talk about was like the the subjectivity of how each character or each person um, views reality and how um and I wanted the thoughts and motivations of the character to become really abundant and clear to the reader, uh, since that was going to be a centerpiece of the work. Um, and so I think that that was one of the most challenging parts. But I think I, I did a quite a good job, I'd say myself, of um, towards the end of, of sticking with um, one consistent um, point of view and not bridging off into maybe a third person omniscient um, or something like that, where you really want to stick with one specific type of point of view. Um, and so then as I was getting towards the end of the story, um, I was really searching for um, what types of symbols or reoccurring themes to, to put into the story. And that was another challenging aspect of the story since it, in any good work of fiction, it's not just an imaginary story that has no real world ramifications or significance. It always has, the best works of fiction always have some relevance um, to today's society or the nature of, uh, of our present day culture. And so that was, um, I really wanted to focus on, from the very beginning, um, even before I started the story I eventually finished, um, I knew that I wanted to have something along the lines of resilience and finding hope, even when there seems to be none. Um, I don't quite know um, why this was so appealing to me, but I knew that once I started writing and this was the story I wanted to write. So I think that something that helped me with this was, um, my experience as being a volunteer at St. Luke's University Hospital um, for the past two years. I'd had really close um, in encounters and very deep conversations with, um, with numerous patients about their experiences in the hospital and how, um, how difficult it was to retain hope that things were going to improve. Um, and even when all signs pointed that to things that, that they were going to be okay, it was still difficult for them to internalize that and to accept to themselves that things we're really going to be okay. Um, and so that dilemma, that personal dilemma between, um, between finding the, the resilience to continue, that's the, that was the central component of my story. And I wanted to really explore that by going deep into um, the personal in, uh, in, um, inflection and the introspection of the character uh, in the story where that's really the, the, the uh, main point of the story, not so much as just the plot, but mainly just the conflict, uh, the internal conflict between wanting to give in and wanting to, to persist in spite of the difficulties. Um, and so in the story, the specific details of the story, um, I don't want to give away too much in case, um, in case that um, someone would want to read it. But um, I wanted to really explore the, um, the contrast between the um, a challenging uh, world and also um, a more inviting, happier world that isn't real. So to this end, I wrote a story where um, the main character is confined to a hospital due to a diagnosis of cancer. And so I really wanted to make sure to not make light of such a, such a nuanced and dark topic as this. And so I, I really wanted to make sure it was important to me to not include any cliches or just have um, like a happily ever after ending since that doesn't how that's not how it works in the real world. So I wanted I was very careful to make sure that I not to just to do something like that, and to do justice to the to the nuanced topic. Um, and so during the story and throughout the throughout the narration, I um, wanted the character in the hospital to find a sort of respite in this reoccurring dream sequence, where um, the story actually begins in the dream and it only becomes apparent to the reader later on that this isn't reality. And so I wanted to contrast the, the dark and the grim realities of the, of, of the waking hours um, for the main character and the idyllic, serene, um, but not real um, moments in this dream setting. And to have the, the central um, plot be choosing between this easy but... Um, but not real reality of the dream and choosing to persist despite the challenges in real life. Um, and so the eventual resolution, I uh, will not disclose now since I want to leave that open uh, in case someone wants to read the story. But I think that um, talking about these themes has been really interesting and I've definitely developed a lot as a writer 
Um, and I would definitely encourage anyone who's on the cusp um, or on the on the fence about writing a Comenius project to to do one since you really do develop so many so many traits. Well, thank you for listening to my presentation.